Hey, Jeff Chavez of JC Media. Now, this is something new. I'm going to try Zoom with my buddy Jeff Marler, high school friend, and we're just movie geeks, so we're going to try a podcast about movies. And our initial episode is Bill and Ted's, or you tell them, Jeff. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Most excellent. As you can tell, we're men of that age. We really never grew up. I've got Yogi Bear back here. Jeff's got all kinds of Star Wars toys and stuff. So, Jeff, it's our first episode. Uh, you and I go back over 30, 35 years. Back yeah, at least. Yeah, older is all the way back to what, junior high. Yeah, indeed. So we've always talked about movies and whatnot. So without further ado, let's just get into it. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure from 1989. Uh, I'll kick it off. Jeff, I watched the film last night. And I had realized that I grew up. What are your initial thoughts? Uh, I kind of outgrew it. What are your initial thoughts? I was actually amazed not how I remembered it all. It felt like close to a Disney movie, which I didn't remember it that way at all. It was not a, I like a lot of stuff in the 80s. It hasn't aged well in a lot of ways. Yeah. I, I did, didn't hate it, some of it, but yeah, it's not how I remember it all. Yeah, my first hint was it was PG. I was like, okay, PG, I guess they didn't have PG-13 back then. So PG, and uh, I'm watching it, and we've got our star, Keanu Reeves, and Alex Winter. So let's go over a little bit about them. At that time, Keanu was blown up with River's Edge, uh, and you had seen Alex in The Lost Boys? He was in The Lost Boys. I'm not even sure if he had a line in that. He hadn't done a whole lot. Yeah, he was a little little vampire, and they – they staked him pretty early when he was hanging yeah. upside down. Yeah, so. he, he had not a lot of stuff going on. Keanu had done a lot. He did multiple lead roles. It's before action Keanu. Yeah, he was. That. And he, he done just, some family movies. Yeah, he was just airhead Keanu at that time. Good looking yeah. guy. Uh, yeah. Interesting look, you know. These surfer dudes uh, have to pass a history test. Give us a little more on a some of the plot. Well, the problem is, is they are, don't want to call them dumb, but they don't really know anything. They are, know nothing about what they're supposed to do. They're in trouble. But by a luck of fate, they're supposed to do something very important. So someone comes from the future to help them out. They bring a time machine with them. Yeah. Which, yeah. Which is George Carlin. They have to pass this history test. Unbeknownst to them, as you say, a mysterious force comes. <laughs> George Carlin, the great George Carlin. Any notes about him? He was one of the greatest stand-up comedians that, you know, that we've ever had in this country. Wasn't in a lot of movies. I think he might be a little bit forgotten, but he was, he was a genius. So and he's definitely a highlight in this movie. So that, that was a smart move casting him. Yeah, he was a different, he was a different force. Uh, because we're used to seeing the comedy, and here was this straight guy, no nonsense. He, he previewed Bill and Ted. Well, he actually took Bill and Ted to Bill and Ted at, when they were studying at the Circle K, which, fun fact, uh, they were supposed to film it at the 7-Eleven, but they couldn't get right, so it was Circle K. It has the great line, when, ma'am, when did the Mongols rule China? <laughs> and then, <laughs> right? And then George Carlin comes in in a telephone booth, which dates us pretty bad. He tells them that they have to, uh, they're gonna, their music saves the future, saves the world in the future. So convinces them to go back in time or shows them the booth that they can do anything they want with it to go back in time and help them pass this test, which they have to pass, you know. I've got this line though. Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. Yeah, that was little Alex Winter. No, the key end, you said that. Bottom line, they didn't understand what they were doing. They, they go back to Napoleon's time, right? Right. Napoleon's and, time, Billy the Kid. They basically just kidnap historical figures. Yeah, Bring so let's, let's go over Napoleon. Then they got Billy the Kid. Socrates. Socrates, which how they went over Socrates was awesome because uh, Socrates was giving a lecture and no one understood what he was saying. But then Keanu tells him, all we are, dude. It's dust in the wind. So, Socrates thought these were the greatest guys ever. Went with them in the phone booth, 
they go through time. Their plan it was supposed to learn about history, but they decided to take these dudes and they're going to present them to the history exam. Joan of Arc, Beef Oven, as they call it, right? Are we right. Genghis? And Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan, yeah, that's it. So, any other notes before we get to the exciting end on this movie that, that you picked up on? Like I said, I, I, I think I outgrew it. It was kind of childish. I loved it at the time, the guitar thing. Any notes that you have about this movie or how it got started? You know, it's kind of interesting. I did a little research and the, the, the started with just the two characters. The two guys that wrote this came up with the characters in a college improv class. There was actually a third one named Bob and they were just teenagers trying to study, but they don't know anything. And uh, kind of the catch was whatever was said, they had, they had no real answer. So they would say uh, excellent or bogus. It's only answered. Bob quit. So the other two guys continued with it. One of them, son, uh, Chris Matheson, his dad was Richard Matheson, famous writer. If you don't recognize the name, you'd, you'd recognize his works. So you can Google it. But they, um, as time went on, they just kept develop, developing it. One of them got a job on the Gary Sandling show. The other one went to graduate school, but they kept working on sketches. And uh, what they kept coming back to was uh, these dumb guys didn't know anything meeting historical figures. And since they didn't know anything, they treat everybody the same, which is usually treat them nice. They're innocents, basically. They had no background for anybody they met because they didn't know anything. You know, and time travel began to creep in as a way to get them to meet historical figures. You know, and then it became a movie idea after that. So cut to the chase. They... They go back in time through a lot of shenanigans. There's shenanigans at the mall. They round them all up and they present these guys to their history class, which gets them an A plus. So George Carlin's mission is fulfilled. Uh, so that brings us into the second one. And now even the third, which is coming out uh, August 28th. And we're gonna see what, how these two guys in their fifties, which is interesting to us, how these two guys still haven't saved the world, so they're going back and forth in time again for more shenanigans. And they don't look like, from what I saw in the preview, they don't look like they've smartened up any. No, they still look fairly stupid. Same two guys. It was yeah. great to see Keanu doing the dopey guy again. I was <laughs> First thing I wanted to see in the trailer is if he could still do it, and he, he does. After the John Wicks and the Matrixes and all that? Yeah, I'm a big John Wick fan, so this is a polar opposite, but he could still do it. Alex Winter barely looks any different, actually. He, yeah, barely. Exactly the same guy in this in the trailers too. So to sum up, when I saw it, and I wanted to be an actor, A plus in '89, Chris and I, my brother, saw it at the movies, and it ruled for a couple of years. But now that I go back, my my, my uh, grade has dropped down to a 72, 73, C minus, maybe a C on the movie. I look forward to see if I'll enjoy uh, the next one, the third one. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, some of the acting in this one was, was most egregious. Most, most heinous. Yeah, most some of the special heinous. effects were most heinous. I, I know the budget, and yeah, it, it showed a lot of places. Nonetheless, it's good to uh, see characters from then into now, into their 50s, and age with us all. So we're going to come back, hopefully, with part two. This is going to go viral, this podcast, and we're going to come back with a review of the third movie, uh, go check it out. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Jeff, what we're going to do is when the uh, next movie comes out, we'll watch it and then we'll review it again and see if we like these characters anymore or not. So until then, until the third movie, which comes out August 28th, I'm Jeff Chavez. I'm Jeff Marler. And we'll catch you later in about a month. Yeah. Be, later, excellent, be excellent to everyone. Party on, dudes. <laughs>